half a millennium ago, light left a star that may already be dead, yet it still blazes from Orion's shoulder. Betelgeuse, a red supergiant 600 light years away, has been pulsing wildly, and in early 2014, it dimmed sharply by half a magnitude, a striking clue that something extraordinary is unfolding at its fiery core. Gaia's most recent parallax places Betelgeuse at about 600 light years from Earth, meaning the starlight you see tonight left the star around 1400 CE. As a semi regular variable, its brightness swings between magnitude 0.0 and 1.3, changes tracked by backyard telescopes each night and large surveys like ASASSN and the upcoming LSST. This 6th century light travel delay implies that if Betelgeuse exploded any time during the Renaissance, its supernova blast is still on the way. It could arrive tomorrow, next year, or centuries from now. Beyond distance, Betelgeuse's immense lumosity, over a hundred thousand times that of our Sun, amplifies every slight dip and flare. Precise parallax measurements from space-based telescopes ensure these estimates carry less than 2% uncertainty, reinforcing the drama of watching cosmic history unfold before our eyes. Following the dust-driven great dimming of 2019-2020, when freshly formed circumstellar grains veiled the star, Betelgeuse largely rebounded, only to fade again by nearly 0.5 magnitude in early 2024. This smoother, week-long decline appeared in TESS light curves and in visual logs from the AAVSO, while HARP spectra revealed new absorption at 15 km per second, indicating high-speed gas flows. Infrared imaging from JWST found pockets of warm dust, and radio observatories detected faint maser emissions changing in sync. Dipole UF polymetry traced asymmetric dust clumps and Chara infrarometry mapped bright and dark surface hotspots shifting over days. These multi-wavelength clues defy a simple dust cloud narrative, pointing instead to deep pulsation modes or localized shell ejections, and have galvanized an international campaign spanning optical, infrared, radio and submillimeter telescopes to catch every nuance before the next unexpected fade. A massive star's demise begins when its core exhausts nuclear fuel. In Betelgeuse, hydrogen fuses into helium, and successfully heavier elements burn carbon, neon, oxygen, and silicon, each stage lasting shorter than the last. Finally, an iron core forms, and iron fusion consumes energy rather than releasing it. When that core mass exceeds roughly 1.4 m, support fails in under a millisecond. Gravity collapses the core electrons merge with protons into neutrons, and a flood of neutrinos rushes out. Detectors like Ice Cube, Super Cameo Kande, and the Deep Sea Antares would catch this neutrino flash hours before any light. The rebounding core sends a shockwave, racing outward at 5,000 km per second, creating a UV X-ray flash detected by Swift within minutes. As the shock plows through the envelope, it forges heavy elements, gold, uranium, and beyond through the R process, seeding galaxies with metals. Days later, colliding ejecta ignite radio and X-ray emission, and, in some rare cases, fall back onto the core, powers a gamma-ray burst, or spins up a magnetar, offering a full multi-messenger spectacle. Once the initial peak fades, Betelgeuse's supernova will enter a plateau phase, lasting weeks to months, powered by hydrogen recombination in its vast envelope, offering a window into the star's outer layers. As the ejector expand and thin, we'll transition into the nebula phase, where forbidden lines of oxygen, calcium, and iron dominate the spectrum, revealing the explosion's energy and asymmetries. Around a hundred days post-burst, dust freshly condensed in the cooling ejector will grow in the infrared, tracing the conditions needed to form the raw materials of planets. Meanwhile, the shockwave's collision with Betelgeuse's decades-old stellar wind will ignite radio and X-ray emission, mapping its final centuries of mass loss. In the innermost regions, fallback of material onto the collapsed core may spin up a pulsar or magnetar, whose wind nebula can be tracked for years to come. Finally, scattered light, echoes of surrounding interstellar dust, will let us replay and spectroscopically dissect the explosion long after the direct flow has faded. Together, 
These stages, from plateau to nebula, dust formation to compact remnant, ensure Betelgeuse's finale will enrich our understanding of stellar death and the cosmic origins of elements. Despite its pyrotechnics, Betelgeuse's supernova poses no threat to life on Earth. The lethal zone for harmful ionizing radiation and cosmic rays spans about 100 light years. At 600 light years, Betelgeuse sits well beyond that danger radius. Its neutrino burst, although intense, interacts so weakly it barely registers, and gamma ray flux drops off steeply with distance. Atmospheric models from NASA and ESA show no significant ozone depletion or radiation hazards. In fact, analyzing its neutrinos and cosmic rays offers a safe way to refine our understanding of Earth's atmosphere and space weather. Betelgeuse's grand finale thus promises unrivaled spectacle, not an existential threat. In 2018, astronomers using ALMA spotted a surprising pattern on Betelgeuse's surface. Molecules like CO and SIO showed Doppler shifts indicating speeds of about 5 km per second, around 18,000 km per hour. That motion implies the star spins once every 20 years, unbelievably fast for a bloated giant hundreds of times wider than our Sun. Normally, as a star expands, it should slow down, just like a figure skater loses speed with outstretched arms. So, what's giving Betelgeuse its unexpected twirl? One idea is that it once merged with a smaller companion, stealing its angular momentum. Another points to colossal convection cells, plasma bubbles the size of Earth's orbit, churning beneath the surface and creating an illusion of rapid spin. But how do we read that spin from 600 light-years of space? The answer lies in the Doppler effect. Light from the region rotating toward us shifts ever so slightly bluer, while light from the opposite side shifts redder. Higher resolution instruments like ALMA in the submillimeter, HARPS in visible light, and CryRes on the VLT in infrared track these tiny color changes in specific molecular and atomic lines. By mapping the velocity gradient across Betelgeuse's disk and filtering out noise from gigantic surface bubbles and pulsations, scientists piece together its true rotation. Advanced 3D simulations then model how convection and waves distort those signals helping to tease apart real spin from the star's restless weather. But there is a twist. Computer simulations offer a dramatic explanation. Betelgeuse may have swallowed a smaller companion star long ago. As the red giant's envelope expanded, it reached the companion's orbit, drawing the two stars together. Friction within the dense, shared envelope slowed the companion, causing it to spiral inward and merge with Betelgeuse's core. This violent event would have dumped vast angular momentum into Betelgeuse, spinning it up to the rapid rates we observe today. Models also show a merger could disrupt the helium core and dredge fresh hydrogen inward, briefly resetting fusion conditions before the star resumed its red supergiant phase. This cosmic megamix helps explain Betelgeuse's unusual rotation and enhanced nitrogen signature. A simpler explanation suggests Betelgeuse's apparent rapid spin is an optical illusion caused by its boiling surface. Its disk teems with gargantuan convective cells, hot plasma rising and cooler gas sinking in patterns hundreds of millions of kilometers across. These turbulent motions produce localized Doppler shifts that mimic global rotation. Infraredometers like VLTI Pioneer, Gravity, and Chara, combined with spectropolymetry, can map these surface structures in unprecedented detail. Paired with sophisticated 3D convection simulations, astronomers aim to tease apart true rotation from turbulent artifacts, determining whether Betelgeuse's spin is real or merely a mirage created by stellar weather. Beyond the dance of plasma and the question of spin, astronomers can't help but wonder what Betelgeuse's finale will look like and feel like. When it erupts, the star could blaze to a magnitude minus 5 or minus 6, outshining Venus, visible even in daylight, and casting faint shadows long after sunset. Yet, despite the pyrotechnics, Earth will be perfectly safe. At roughly 600 light years, Betelgeuse lies six times beyond the 100 light years danger zone for harmful radiation or particle blasts. Intriguingly, because its light takes centuries to arrive, any supernova since about 1400 CE remains on its way, meaning we're already watching the star's ancient twilight history. Models predict the actual collapse between 10,000 and 100,000 years from now, 
a mere heartbeat in stellar lifespans, yet far beyond our own. If we're lucky, neutrino detectors like Super Cameo Kande may catch a burst hours before the first flash of light, giving scientists precious heads up for the greatest sky show in human history. Each new twist, like 2024's second dimming, the spinning fast mystery, merger simulations, and convection illusion tests sharpens our understanding of massive star evolution. Betelgeuse is a real-time laboratory in our cosmic backyard, teaching us how supernovae ignite, how heavy elements spread through galaxies, and how stars influence planet formation. Its unfolding story informs search strategies for stellar explosions in distant galaxies, refines model of galactic chemical enrichment, and even sheds light on the conditions that make life possible. So, keep watching Orion's shoulder, and if this cosmic saga has you hooked, a like and subscribe will ensure you don't miss the next twist. Betelgeuse may still surprise us with another dimming, a record-breaking pulse, or one day, a daylight bright detonation. Until then, we listen for its heartbeat in every flicker, and every spectral shift waiting for the greatest light show in human history.